hello there. Sorry, I'm Bradford Sherman, and along with Christy Welch, the uh, Direct Food and Agricultural Marketing Specialist. And Christy, uh, here on Marketing Matters today, we're going to talk about something. Do you want to guess what it is? I'm going to give you a hint. Oh, I'm going to give you wow. a big hint. Oh! Yeah! We're going to talk about the rain right after this. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. We're back, and uh, Christy, we've had so much rain, it seems like. Now, the, the last couple of days, it's been kind of hot and maybe, you know, getting more like summer, but uh, it just seems like for the longest time there, it was just rain, 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 rain. How, do you have any idea how much over average we've been getting of, of the rain? Yes, I do. I was just watching the news here the other day, Brad, and we are eight inches above normal for this year, okay. so it's been way more rain than we'd like to see. Right. Right. Well, it, it seems it seemed like eight inches. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it seems like it's a lot. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm not a, a farmer. I'm not really a a, a crops guy. Uh, but you know, you always hear rain good for the crops. But I guess there's a situation in which you can just have too much rain, and then you know what happens then? Is it a situation where uh, it just stunts the growth of the crops, or um, does it kill them all together? Do, does it lead to disease? You know, what does too much rain do? Well, that's a great question, Brad. And so this year, probably the one of the things that's affected a lot of farmers here, especially in Ohio, well, throughout the Midwest, is the fields are so wet, they can't even get their equipment into the field to plant. So we think about you know, we might get aggravated because it's too wet to go out and mow our lawns. Um, and you stop and think about when you do that, how your lawn mower, your little lawn tractor, can make ruts in your lawn. So then you need to think about multiplying the weight of a large tractor um, and getting out into fields that are just soaked with water. It just is not doable. The tractors will leave ruts if not get stuck. Um, the seeds won't get planted correctly at the right depth at the right spacing. Um, and then the other problem, even if you were to get out there and get those seeds in the ground, a lot of times it's so wet that instead of that seed sprouting and growing, it will lay there and rot. Um, my husband and I have a very small farm and we planted some pumpkins here a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm and had to go back through uh, just last night and replant and as we were doing that we noticed that the seeds that did not come up it was because it was too wet and they just laid in the ground there and rotted and of course when they do that you have no crop right okay well are there uh Obviously, when you have a problem with a seed rotting, I mean, that affects almost everything, but uh, is there any particular crops that get more, uh, that are more affected negatively by excess rain than others, or is it just everything? Well, I think this year it's pretty much everything because a lot of the issue is not being able to plant at all just mm -hmm. because the ground is too wet. Now, we deal with our uh, direct marketing team deal a lot with spe specialty crop producers, so fruits and vegetables and those kinds of things. Um, and so when we have a season like this year, even when you're able to get your crops out in the ground, with all the moisture, lack of sunshine, high humidity, that leads to another whole host of problems with those crops. They don't get enough sunshine, they're not going to grow well. With all the rain and humidity, that leads to more disease pressure for those crops. So it's just going to be a really challenging year for all of our farmers this year. Um, and again, if you stop and think about if you had a job mm -hmm. where you got paid once a year for a crop that you produce and when you're not able to produce that crop, we're going to have some farmers out there that are not going to have income or much of any this year at all. So it's really a, a dire situation for our farmers. Um, is there any, are there any programs or anything that can, that can help, uh, you know, producers, uh, farmers, um, in the event that, you know, something like this happens and it wipes out their crops? I mean, are there things like that to help them? Well, that's a great question too, Brad. And so I do not deal much with the grain farms, the, the field corn and soybeans and those kinds of things. Now, through the federal farm bill, there are some programs that might help them a little bit. But when I deal, again, our team deals more with specialty crops 
crops. Um, so we're talking again fruits and vegetables. The availability to take advantage of in insurance for specialty crops is very, very limited. And so if you're able to first of all get specialty crop insurance, which again is through a federal program, um, typically it only will pay to cover the cost of maybe planting a crop. So it again is still, uh, it helps our specialty crop growers, but again that's very limited. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, we've had all this rain and we have farmers that are unable to uh, get the production that they're used to. Mm -hmm. um, obviously this is going to be a problem that trickles down all the way to the consumer. Are we going to see situations in which we're going to see fewer farmers markets popping up and, and you know fewer things available at them? I mean, what, what's going to be the fallout from all this rain? What's it going to look like? Well, that's a really good question as well. And I don't think we'll see fewer farmers markets, but I do think you might see less abundance at some of those farmers markets. Now, um, one of the things that I think it's important for our producers to remember to do is to really communicate with our customers. Um, you know, we still need to eat, and so we still are gonna have to have access to food. And so if it's a situation where there's a crop or several crops that you produce, um, that this year, for whatever reason, typically the rain, whether you can't get it planted or you planted and it rotted in the field or, or you have disease issues. You can certainly look to other producers around the region, uh, although the Midwest as a whole has been really affected. It might be a situation where you're going to have to look at other uh, produce from other parts of the region to still be able to supply products to your customers, because again, we still need to eat. My suggestion if you do that, though, is to be very transparent with your customers and help them understand if you're offering products product that you didn't produce or wasn't produced here in Ohio to really clearly talk to them about why you're offering that product due to the rain, due to the limited supply here in Ohio, and be very transparent with your customers. Mm -hmm. now, um I know you're a marketing specialist, and, and obviously, if, if someone comes to you and wants to, um, you know, you can tell them that face to face. Mm -hmm. But um, what are some other ways that maybe uh, they can get the communicate with the customers and kind of get the word out about, um, you know, maybe some use of some, maybe some unconventional channels that maybe they haven't had to use? Can you talk a little bit about getting that out? Absolutely, that's a great question, Brad, as well. And so one of the really easy things you can do, especially at farmers markets, is just put up signs hmm. say that these. Uh, tomatoes happen to be from Kentucky and maybe they're not our tomatoes and that should prompt your consumers to ask questions about that. The other thing of course with social media being as prevalent as, as it is um, which can be a blessing and a curse but it's really a great way to help your customers again understand the impacts that this weather has had on us. Some friends of mine um, have a farm where they do mostly field crops, so corn, soybeans, that kind of thing. And through their Facebook page here a couple weeks ago, I saw they planted a picture that was taken that date last year, and the corn was about above my head. Mm -hmm. And on the same date this year, she was holding a seed of corn in her hand because it had been too wet to get in the field to even plant that corn. And I think visuals like that can really help our customers better understand the effects the weather is having on us because again as a general public we're so removed from food production we just don't understand uh, some of these things sometimes and so to really help to educate your customers about how this weather is impacting farmers is very beneficial. I know the picture you're talking about in fact I saw it on social media I can't remember which it was on maybe it was on reddit or something I hardly ever use Facebook but um, but I was trying to find that picture before we came on because I thought that would be a really telling mm -hmm. thing uh, to pop up there. So yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and, and because I, I, I kind of feel like I'm one of those people that's kind of removed from it. I don't exactly understand about how all the production works and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so speaking uh, maybe for, for the type of folks like myself, you go to the grocery store, are you going to be seeing higher prices on, on the produce and the vegetables and the fruits and everything as a result of all this, uh, maybe uh, scarcer amounts or, you know, obviously, like you said, not the kind that you're used to. Mm 
<laughs> Can you talk about what it's going to be like for the average Joe going to a grocery store? It's going to be higher pricing. Well, I, I would certainly anticipate price increases in, in food uh, in the coming months. I think it's a little bit too early to tell for sure. But if you look at the national media, well, not only are we affected here in the Midwest, but places like Florida and California, where a lot of our specialty crops, our fruits and vegetables are produced, have had weather issues as well. And so, again, it goes back to that supply and demand. And any time the demand uh, is high, because again, our consumers really want to know where our food is produced and how it's produced and who it's producing it. Um, so when we have that high demand for locally produced foods and a short supply, it just makes sense that uh, prices will increase. And let's also keep in mind, too, as a producer, if I typically sell 100 bushels of tomatoes, and this year I've only got maybe 50 bushels of tomatoes, mm -hmm. um, and so my income basically has been cut in half. In addition to that, if you're able to find other producers where you can buy some of these products, you're not going to make the margin on those products typically either because you're paying uh, somebody else for that product as opposed to what you normally would produce yourself. Mm -hmm. So so I do think that at some point, and I'm not an economist, so uh, don't hold me to this, but uh, indications at this point are is that at some point we will see an increase in food costs down the road. Okay. And this is probably a it's going to sound like a really stupid question, um, but you know I specialize in those sometimes. <laughs> um, is um, is it too late? In other words, like uh, let's say the weather straightens up and we start seeing more normal weather patterns like we're used to, can kind of can things kind of get turned around, or are we at a point now where because we had so much rain at the beginning of the season that now? All of our production is shot, and it's going to, and we're going to feel that effect all the way through. Or, or is, there, is, there, is there still hope that this can get turned around? Well, I think there's always hope, and in, in the farming community, you can't uh, put a plant in the ground and be hopeful. And, and you know, just in general, I think most farmers are optimistic. So I would say that it depends a lot on um, the crop that you're producing. So, for example, I mentioned that my husband and I had to go replant some pumpkins. Mm -hmm. um, well, the pumpkin seeds that we um, have are about a hundred days to maturity, which means from the time we put it in the ground, if it grows correctly, it's about a hundred days until we have a pumpkin that then we can offer to our consumers. So if we start thinking about this being almost first of July, so if we can still get pumpkins in the ground fairly quickly and they're a typically hundred or less day, then we still have August, September, July, August, September um, to hopefully have a mature crop by the October demand, which really is when pumpkins are in demand. It gets earlier and earlier every year. But the other thing that we have to take into consideration of what as well is when we get into the fall, well, what's the frost date? Because mm. some of these specialty crops, again, are very sensitive to frost. So if, if we're not going to have a crop until after our frost date in the fall, then it's just kind of a gamble to see how that happens. So I'd say that producers really need to pay attention to um, the maturity of the crops that they're planting and how long it takes for them to get there. Okay. Well, really interesting stuff, Christy. Um, you know, I, I don't know what else we can talk about. We, we, we always talk about the weather, and I don't know what else we can say about the weather. Yeah. Is there is there anything else on this topic that, uh, that you know, you think that you want to get out, you know, get the word out to people who might be watching? Well, I would just stress again to those that are watching, whether you're a producer or a consumer, to really try to um, communicate effectively, and we have so many tools to do that. Um, uh, we talked about pictures is a good way to do that. We can also, you know, use short video clips and, and just walk somebody around the farm and help them understand um, what it's like now. I mean, we try to encourage our producers to build a library of photographs of their operations and even a video library. So if you have some great pictures from last season of where your crop was and then take one from this season, uh, again, that just really helps, I think, the consumer to visualize the impact that these are having. Mm -hmm. Well, when you talked about, you, you mentioned letting people walk around your farm, that kind of reminded me, is, uh, I know you're doing a lot with agritourism mm -hmm. right now, um, you know, could diversifying uh, 
what you offer by you know doing some agritourism and stuff like that can that help offset you know hey I got a bad crop this year maybe there's some other things I can do like the agritourism that's a great point and a great question too Brad um, you know we do we are seeing that many of our uh, especially crop producers and farmers in general when they add agritourism enterprises to their operations it brings in another stream of income mm -hmm. um, it's another outlet for some of their products that they may have um, and it's just again a great way to bring the general public into our actual production agriculture facility to help them understand the impacts of the weather and how these things are produced. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I think we're just about out of time. Uh, appreciate you uh, educating us on, especially me, because I, you know, I don't know a whole lot about this stuff. And there are probably some other folks out there watching who can say the same. Uh, I was not aware of all the logistical challenges mm -hmm. that a lot of times the farmers will face as a result of this rain. And I guess let's just hope for some more normal weather, uh, so I don't have to carry this umbrella around all the time. Yep. And uh, you know, and the, maybe everything will we'll get some mature crops by the time it's uh, time to harvest. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you for being here and thank you for watching Marketing Matters and we will see you next time.